Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the 70th Annual Minnesota State High School Boys Hockey Tournament. Tonight's double-A state title features the champions of Section 1 with a record of 25-4-1, the Lakeville North Panthers. Against the champions of Section 2 with a record of 24-4-1, the Edina Hornets. There's no question, Tori, he's made a huge difference in that to Ottinger here in the state tournament has put on a show. Our starting goal is brought to you by Catholic United Financial Life Insurance Annuities and Retirement Products. It's a wonder that a kid that young could be this good so fast. And he's six foot three on top of it. Look at that goals against and save percentage. Just outstanding. In the other net, Andrew Rokel with a great season as well. A very low goals against average and a 922 save percentage. And both of these goaltenders can expect to see a lot of puck tonight because each of these clubs have high powered offenses that are capable of getting many shots on net. All right, we are ready to go. Championship Saturday. You're at 45 TV. We're in Underway. Great to have you with us wherever you may be throughout the state and around the world watching here. And these are two powerhouses ranked one and two coming into this game. Come to the near side with the three games in three days for these teams. It'll be interesting to see if the coaches roll these lines over maybe a little more than they might otherwise. You're right, Gary, because they had a lot of ice time the first two lines for this Lakeville the last couple of games. They may want to try and keep some fresh legs out there. Turn back in. Uh, Foos got it into the corner. Shot. Score! Oh. What a great setup on the near side goal and a one nothing lead as Adina goes on top early in this game. Now watch this play. It starts back at the blue line with Tyler Nanny making an excellent move on the point. He feeds the puck across as he does that. Dornbach breaks through the net. So you got a, a nice pass coming from the right side right here. Nanny makes a move there. Another one right here to get around. Now he's going to feed it all the way across to Wade. Wade to Dornbach. Wide open net. Dornbach puts it away. Mm. A three-way passing play. Tic-tac-toe. He can't draw him up any better than that. Dornbach will pick up his uh, second goal of this tournament. And his seventh of the year. So he's doing an outstanding job putting the puck in the net here in the state tournament. At an early 1-0 lead for Edina. And it comes at 2.09 of the period. Wait, will pick up one of the assists. And uh, Foos will get the other. Boy, what a job Wade is doing. That puts him at a plus five now for the tournament. As he adds another on the assist. Stolen at the end with a spin move. Hazlitt. Hazlitt can do that with the puck. We've seen him throughout this tournament handle it well. Shot got deflected. High slot. Shot and the save made. Rebound. Score! Good move there, good shot from outside the circle and right on the doorstep, Johnson. It looked like Johnson to me was able to push it past Roko to tie this game at one. Four checking to Lakeville North, getting the Dyna to turn the puck over at the top of the circle. As they do that, the shot comes from the top of the circle, the far side, and down low you see number six, Johnson, just pushing that puck right by Roko was reaching for it couldn't get to it in time we mentioned the other night of all the players who were due Johnson was one he's had innumerable opportunities to score that's going to be his first goal though of the tournament he's got a goal and a couple of assists and he ties this up on the third shot by Lakeville North Scoring and it is 1-1 one, one. Yeah, he's been a hard working player and playing very well good job on the rebound that'll go back up onto the point and a back shot that's going to go wide Goldsdorf and Nanny defensively as the Bucks moved out to center. Goal number six for Johnson, uh, 13th of the season, rather first of the tournament. Haslett and Ennebeck are going to get the assists on it at 9.35, the tying goal. Munson came in, he gets knocked down. A couple of good checks, Ennebeck was one who put it on there, dug it right back out. Plugging into the middle of shot, delayed, score! The lead right back, Ben Foley moved in from the blue line. Well, there was a delayed penalty call coming against Lakeville, but as you said, Foley moving in from the blue line takes an excellent pass out of the corner and is able to beat Holdinger on the far side to put Edina right back up ahead here, 2-1. to one. Nice play out of the corner. Foley capitalizing on the pass. 
You'll see Munson battling for the puck to go down low. You have Fiddler going behind the net chasing it. That puck's going to come right around to Munson. And he's going to give it right back to Foley who puts it away. A nice play by Cullen Munson and a great shot by Foley. Puts Edina back up 2-1. to one. So the junior defenseman gets just his second goal of the season. And his first point of the tournament. And gives Edina the 2-1 to one lead. And a real good move. Munson will get the assist at 10:08. The goals 33 seconds apart. The tying goal by Lakeville North, and then another go-ahead goal for Edina. Remember, you've got two players from each team in the box, so it's caused some shuffling of lines here, which may make a difference as to how solid the play is when you shuffle players around. Power play much better than that here in the tournament as they have gone three for six on power play chances. And they've got a chance to extend their lead on their first power play of the game. Uldorf was working outside. Score! Set up for Fiddler who tips it home. And a three to one Edina lead. Well that was really good puck movement by Edina. They moved him four times. Started in the left point, went over to the right side, back to the left, back down deep, and that pass right across the fiddler in the doorstep. Actually, Ottinger had no chance in that. Just an excellent passing play. You have two options in front of the net and off to the left. Here you see Zildorf met, putting it down low, back to Zildorf, will go right back low again. As he does that, Bellows puts it down in the corner, all quick, right to Fiddler. And that was a very, very well executed power play. So the big power play continues for a dine-up, and Fiddler congratulated on the ice and on the bench as he gives Adina a 3-1 lead. And there is Miguel Fiddler. He's had a solid tournament. He'll pick up his first goal of the tournament. Right back the other way, hit by Bob. Make a better pass than that in front of the blue line. The winger had to stop and wait for the puck. That, when he finally threw it in, that eliminated anybody going after that loose puck. He didn't have an easy time getting it out. Alta Villa sent it in. Two on the puck near side, opened it up. Shot, save off the blocker, comes down in front. Rebound, score! Coming fast and furious, a power play goal for Lakeville. And they make it a one goal game. Power plays are coming fast and furious, and those goals are happening right in front. Johnson and Hayes look right in front. A great shot from the blue line. A rebound right down in front of the goaltender. He really had no opportunity to do anything. Johnson's having himself a heck of a night right here. Here's a shot from the blue line. And watch in front. Hazel reaches for it. Goes over to the side and coming in late. Mm. Might have been Arnold. And he puts it away. Shot coming from the Alta Villa. You see the rebound coming up high. People can't find it. And it comes right back out. No, oh, it was Johnson. Mark Johnson. Yep. And the celebration on the bench. There's Max Johnson's got two goals here in the game. His first two of the tournament. A 12-goal scorer Scoring on the season. And it is a 3-2 game. So these defenses who have played so tough during the season and in the tournament, finding the other's offense is really getting a lot of help from the benches. Let's get down to Tory. All right, thanks, Gary. I got uh, the head coach of the Dana Hornets, Kurt Jowes here. Coach, uh, uh, a tough physical battle. Your thoughts on that first period? Yeah, you know, it started out well. We got a little sloppy in the middle. Penalties are going to be a determining factor in a lot of these things. So you got to be disciplined, and they got a good team, so we got to stay in the penalty box. Pretty much the expectation for a championship game. You got a championship here, team here in Lakeville North that you're playing against. What kind of problems do they present? Well, they got a good team, good all round team. They move the puck well, they play well defensively. You know, they got a good team. So that's the problems they'll cause you. <laughs> all right, appreciate your time as always. All right, that's head coach Kurt Jowles. All right, thanks very much. Great start to this game here in the first period. Now we'll wait and see what the adjustments are going to be for each. That's for sure. We know that we're going to see a lot more scoring, I think, before this game's over because both of these clubs are moving the puck well. They're skating. They're getting good opportunities, and we're finding a lot of rebounds in front of the net. So the defensemen are going to have to move people up. Bullies are going to have to be aware. they got to start freezing some of those pucks and getting the face off instead of giving second chances up. Yeah, real good efficiencies here with the Dyna getting three goals on nine shots and Lakeville North picking up their two goals on just six first period shots. Championship Saturday. The Dyna leading it by a zone though by Paling. First line out. Back in shot. 
Save made right underneath the pads. Very good save by Rokel as the youngster. Paling comes right around. Nick Paling's been period. Nanny on the near side. Also work the blue line on the power play. Fiddler in the power play unit. Bellows. Bellows on the off wing right now. They'll look for him as they come over here. Shot. Score! Whoa, what a rip shot by Fiddler. Nice little play. They loaded the left side. Really, Lakeville was looking for a backdoor play. Nanny played it down to Fiddler. Fiddler plays it behind him at the Marcus. He gives it right back to Fiddler. And that one was put away. He kind of just changed that up when Lakeville North was looking down low for that backdoor play. They used it on the short side. Watch a passing play here. That one goes right down behind the net. Back out. And that's it. There's Fiddler giving it to Malquist. Right back to Fiddler. The goalie's moving over that side and right in. So Fiddler continues a big tournament. He gets the 20th of the year and the second of the tournament. Malquist will get another assist, 536. And so will Nanny. And so will Nanny too. on the power play. They've got two power play goals, and what a difference that power play's making now in the tournament. Medina is five for eight on the power play in the tournament after being only 18 percent of the year. All the way down ice. Neely coming back to get it. Trying to send it out. Can't shot. Score! And here it pass. And it is a 5-2 game. Make the mistake and you will pay for it. And Edina puts it home. Yeah, and that's a shot there. It looks like it was mishmash. Taking that Aaron pass, as you said, Gary. And he made no mistake. He hesitated, took a look, and really took a rocket. Here's the pass coming out, and it gets intercepted right there. And look at that shot in the far side. Quite a shot by Mismash after he intercepts that pass and just puts it away. He's putting me down up ahead, five to two. A real mistake right there. As that'll be the fourth of the year, the first of the tourney goal-wise for Mismash. It'll be unassisted at 8:03, and it came in a hurry. And those are goals that not only show up on the board but to the psyche of the opponent because you just gave one up in a game where you know you can't do that. Back in behind the net to get it from Seabrook. Dorf got it. Little tangle at center that's been going on for the last minute. It'll be rushed the other way. There is no whistle. Danny brought it in. It results in a three on two momentarily. Shot. Score! Tapped in by Bellows. While all that was going on Center ice, keep playing, and they get a goal. Exactly. All that was going on at center ice. Danny takes a puck of ice on a three on two. Everybody's focused on two guys rolling around at center ice. He passes it across to a strike. A strike gets it right in the middle to Bellows. Bellows just deflects it in. You got to focus on the game, not pay attention to your teammates uh, grappling in the center of the ice. Here's the pass, Nanny over to A strike, A strike to Bellows, Bellows in the net. And a 6-2 to two lead, and that will result in a timeout being called by Lakeville as the onslaught for Edina taking place here in the second period. Six goals, 15 shots, and not to be blamed as Ottinger, the goaltender, he just hasn't had any help no. in front. That, no one was there. No one was there. It just, they just got to focus on defense. You can't be opening it up yet. But uh, that was a, a real good passing play. And it's, you look at Edina Hornets state titles. He got eight for Edina, three for East. So they've had 11 collectively. And they're after their 12th or 9th, whichever way you want to put it mm -hmm. here tonight. And well on their way. With a 6-2 lead in this game. Uh, stairs, Tori. Yeah, well, Trent Agner, head coach of Lake, Lakeville North. Of course, that was a tough period, but now you have a five-minute major in which to work with. How do you get this, uh, get it into the locker room and get things going here for the third period? Uh, regardless of the power play, I mean, we got an opportunity to do something there, but the energy wasn't great. Made way too many mistakes against a good hockey team. Appreciate your time, Coach. Thanks. All right, that's Trent Agner. Fiddler, Mesmash, and Bellows all picking up the goals in the second period. Three unanswered goals for Edina. One period left on our championship Saturday. And Edina trying to repeat. And right now, six goals on 16 shots has given Edina the 6-2 lead. The 
see if Lakeville can rebound. They've got to do it, taking advantage of that five minute major if they're going to get back into this game. Third period coming up after the crew comes back to take a look at this game so far. In charge of this game. So, Lakeville Norris has got to take some chances, and as we said, ever dangerous against the Adina team that knows what to do when they get opportunities. Oh. Scores! Caver Bellows! Boy, he can shoot the puck. I, I have to tell you, this kid's got a great wrist shot. And the play started with their two young defense when you got Meyer and Pew coming out, freshman and the sophomore. They break the puck out real well. They come up ice and make a pass over to Bellows. Bellows looked like he lost the puck momentarily after that pass across there from a strike. He missed on a shot. Then he gets it back and up a corner. And Keeper Bellows with his second of the night and second of the tournament. And Will DuPont starting to exercise the backup netminder, the senior in this game. He's stretching over there on the Lakeville bench. Bellows' dad had a great shot, and that's why he scored so many goals in HL. And this kid shoots the puck every bit as good as he does. So Keeper Bellows picks up the goal. Bellows having himself quite a game. He's got two goals and an assist now. And then he was had an open net to shoot at at least for half of it. Right back into the middle. There's another opportunity. Munson couldn't get a stick on it. Still can't move it out of the zone. A strike at it. And he will pick that one up. Looking far side centered shot. Score! Great set up to Munson. Colin Munson on the power play goal. Well, that was a pretty, pretty nice setup. Puck came out to the blue line. Nanny feeds it down low. Pass comes right across to Munson. Wide open net. Nanny goes up 8-2. Little tic tac toe on the power play, and you watch the play here. Nanny looks, he sees down low. He's got a teammate open right at the side. That's Fiddler. He gives it over to Munson, and Munson gets on the board. So you got Munson from Fiddler and Nanny to make it 8 2 with 157 to go. That is going to tie a Class AA record for most goals in a game in the tournament. Elk River in 2001 at an 8 to 1 win over. Moorhead and the record of eight goals has been equaled. We're now going to go to running time with a minute 57 left on the clock. It'll be a running time uh, finish unless Lakeville North gets a goal here. It's going to still be a five on three power Green play. Edina's first of the tournament, number and nine, an Colin eight to two lead for Edina. A power the play points are piling up without having maybe to drop the puck. 30 seconds left to go. They're in no hurry to get out there. Congratulations to the Adina Hornets. Back-to-back -back championships. And in this championship game, there was absolutely no doubt about the better team and this tremendous speed this team has shown throughout the tournament. Really has worn down opponents and did so here again in this game. So, countdown underway. Team on the ice. Adina is the champion. Celebrate. with a tremendous performance. I mean, not a lot of pressure, obviously, in this game with all the goals scored. But uh, again, he gave up only two goals in this game, came in with a 9-3 save percentage. Two goals, only 14 shots were allowed to Lakeville North by Adina. 
in this game. I mean, they had only had 23, which is a good uh, 15 below their average, but eight goals. But they had the puck all night long, yeah. and that's what where the factor was. The shots they were taking, they were taking high percentage shots. And it's really a credit to Kurt Giles. What a job he and Longevin and Twilliger and uh, Blueston the staff has done over there over the years. There's Keith for Bellows, our player of the game, brought to you by CCM. Start your legend with CCM hockey. Two goals and an assist, only a sophomore. And what a great future he has ahead of him. That's a very talented team, and you have to really hand it to Kurt Giles because he lost 12 players from last year's championship team. I was very surprised that they made it to the tournament. They not only made it, they were dominating. And it was a, just an unbelievable tournament for them. It didn't seem like they ever stopped, Gary. Their, their speed was just tremendous. They, it obviously was the best factor they had, but they moved the puck so quickly and so well, and they pressure you so, so often that you, you don't have much of that play. And then when you do get some chances, Rocco made a great save. They complete the season with a 13-game win streak, unbeaten in 21 of the last 23 games that they played. And for Lakeville North, obviously a very disappointing night for them. They fell behind early in the game, which has been the M.O. of Edina. Let's go downstairs now for the ceremonies. As we begin the presentation of the Herb Brooks Award, please direct your attention to the video board. you're ever going to see and the Dinah getting the lead early in the game and then just putting the game away now getting to celebrate as the peak champions here in the state of hockey. Well, I think Gary what you said about them having a dominating performance I can't remember one in the near history that was as dominating as that they hit on all cylinders all tournament long and tonight was their best game and it was their best game because they were doing all the little things right. They were moving the puck quickly. They were coming back and supporting the defense down deep. They were taking shots when they had them. Their passes were crisp, hard, fast, and on the tape. And they were killing penalties very well. They, they overall had as collectively a good team effort as I've seen them have this year. This, this to me, was their best game of the year. Very solid, very disciplined, boy. They, they never varied from what, uh, they, what they play as a game, what their style is. Keep skating no matter what the score is. I thought their speed was by far the best of any team that we saw here in the eight in the tournament. Well, when I saw the team early in the year, I, I said that to Curtis. I've been watching him down in hockey for a long time. This is the fastest team I've ever seen. He said it is the fastest team I've ever had. And speed kills at all levels, and especially when you're playing in high school hockey. When you can get the people quickly, as they were doing it, you force them into mistakes, you force them to make plays quicker than they want to play, you really make them uncomfortable for the other team, and that's what they were able to do here. They have a, a lot of skill, they have really a very disciplined way of playing, and that's due to the coaches. And the coach, Trent Eigner from Lakeville North, did an outstanding job. He and Anna Beckwith and Taylor with their team, and I think that uh, no one does it better, though, than Kurt and Longevin and Twilliger, what they were able to accomplish with that team. And they set the standard, and uh, overall a tournament where we saw some outstanding games, including some overtimes, where the teams really went at it. It was uh, uh, more about the offense than I thought it would be, Lou, overall in the tournament. I didn't think we'd see that many goals scored, but some of these games were really 
pretty wide open offensively. Well, you're exactly right. I, I really think that these kids are getting so much more skilled now with the puck. They do sing, things so well, and they move it so quickly, and they're smarter about the game and about the plays they make, and that just creates great scoring opportunities. Good as the goaltenders are, these goaltenders are, are really developing. They're younger, and they've got to really, really be active and, and, and have some knowledge of what's going on in the game because the puck is moving so quickly, and these kids handle it so well. And, that really creates the opportunities that makes these goals possible. All right, Lou, I just want to say thanks. It's been a great pleasure oh, working with you here for the tournament. I absolutely loved it with this great crew from 45. Uh, outstanding work, and to have this opportunity with you has just been a personal pleasure. Well, it's a thrill for me. I, I work with the best now, and I really enjoyed it. So <laughs> thank, thank you very, very much, much for coming. All right.